Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. Today is actually not one of my laptops, but it is one that I've spent a lot of time with because it is the laptop that, for those that were diving into the Mac platform, that I kind of pushed people toward if they needed to make a decision. So I was working on a MacBook Pro mid-2012 uh, i7, 4 gigs of RAM, had a stock 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive, and I received the laptop from the client uh, stating that the computer was running very slowly and they were wondering if anything could be done about it. So I explained to them that their biggest bang for their buck in terms of like speeding the machine up would probably be to swap out the mechanical hard drive for a solid state. I said, if that boost was not enough, then we could look at replacing the RAM as well. Uh, RAM is a good upgrade, but dollar for dollar, you tend to see more of a performance boost when you change the hard drive again from mechanical uh, to get those solid state read and write times. So that's what uh, we set out to do. And in this video, uh, you will see some of the diagnostics as well as the old hard drive removal and the installation of the solid state. The computer was running uh, far slower than I had anticipated, as you will see uh, from the client's brief description. Uh, this machine needed uh, a good amount of love. It had a couple of memory leaks. There were some background tasks running that the client was not aware of. And needless to say, it was uh, it was interesting to work on, and it was also impressive, and I'll, I'll comment uh, throughout this. Uh, this is a two-part video. The other part will contain uh, the battery, but since that's also kind of doubles as a review, I decided to leave it separate from this video. So, hopefully you enjoy the information that follows. If you have any questions, make sure to comment at the video below, and if you like this sort of content, feel free to subscribe and enjoy. So one of the first things that I checked is all of the sensor data, and I found kind of three noteworthy things. First off, the temperatures were pretty much within acceptable limits. I didn't see any like high spikes like I thought I would. That might be conducive of thermal throttling. The other thing that I noticed that the client mentioned was uh, poor battery life. And the battery health is at 68%, so we're getting awfully close to uh, two-thirds of the original battery strength. And it's at around 608 charge cycles, which is a little low to be at that percentage. Uh, normally you can get up to like 800 charge cycles before the battery health degrades that much. And the other thing that I noticed, and probably the most significant, was the memory usage. As you can see, uh, there is a memory leak. Um, there's four gigs of RAM in this thing, and there are a couple of processes, including calendar, uh, NCS, as well as the photo analyzer D, which are just uh, hoovering memory. And this would also, of course, affect battery life because it's got very large background tasks that are using large majorities of the RAM. Uh, there was a point where I was trying to do the backup at the same time and the free amount of memory was down to 17 megabytes. Uh, the computer was literally unusable at that point. So these are a couple of stats that I recommend that you check if you are working on a Mac that has some slowdown issues or low battery life. Uh, this is a great tool. It's iStat Pro. It's the older version. I think it's 4.9.1. I'll leave a link in the video description. So we're on activity man uh, monitor right now. And as you can see, we have, oh, focus. We have uh, photo analysis D taking up apparently six gigs of memory, which is impossible considering that this machine only has four. And I killed the other process that would also eat memory, which is calendar NCS. 
So again, Activity Monitor can help you narrow down the problems and if it's a well-documented memory leak or if in the case of Photo Analysis D, it is going through all of your pictures and adding its own metrics so it can find them easier for you in the future, which is okay, but Apple doesn't really tell you that this is going to happen or how much system resources it's going to use. So be aware, this is not a particular memory leak. The calendar NCS one is, and the only real way to get rid of this is to disable it entirely or wait until it finishes, which can be uh, several days. Okay, so at this point, Photo Analysis D has eaten almost, well, over twice as much amount of memory as this computer actually has, and it's become so entirely unresponsive that the date and time function uh, no longer is doing its job. So, what we're gonna do, oh, we got Google Chrome not responding, and yeah, it's, it's just ready for a good old-fashioned restart. Oh, we're up to 17 gigs. I don't even have a MacBook that's got that much memory. Needless to say, it's time for a restart. So, when we restart it, we're going to take a benchmark of the boot time uh, before and after we open the case and do a couple of small, but perhaps influential, upgrades. Okay, so the computer is off and we're going to be doing this boot from battery power to simulate kind of real world conditions in the current state that the machine is in. I have a stopwatch here. I will also put up uh, one on the screen, Impulse Production. So let's see how we do. Now we play the waiting game. That's the one minute mark. And to protect the privacy of the client, I'm just going to tilt the screen ever so slightly down until uh, this has booted to the desktop. Okay, so that's anonymous enough for me. So we're at a minute and 42 seconds and it's telling me that your computer shut down because of a problem. A problem indeed. The idea of a process that's supposed to be indexing photos taking up 17 gigabytes of RAM that this machine does not have is really unacceptable. So it's time for us to get to work. Okay, so what we're going to be doing with this MacBook today is we're going to be installing a solid state hard drive. This one is happens to be a Western Digital, A Data, Samsung. Really, it was the price that got this one picked over the other ones, so that's a whole different video. To get into this MacBook, you will need a screwdriver. You need a Phillips, and you need a T6 for later. So, Phillips, T6. And let's flip this over, and just Ask in the moment that we can actually open this with a regular screwdriver. Looking at you, pentalobe. 
This particular client is also getting the battery replaced. Uh, however, the battery is not here yet. So, we must wait until the battery comes. These screws at the back uh, have quite a bit of Loctite. They're longer, uh, just for your reference. And the, the battery upgrade will probably be a separate video. Uh, let's see, what else do you need to know about this particular machine? They owned it for five years, it's never been opened, it's never been serviced. I think they have a dog. So, thermals were not bad, but I'm also going to be interested to see what it looks like on the inside. There we go. Not too bad. So, definitely a little bit of uh, dust and hair, but nothing uh, catastrophic. Uh, there is a couple specks of dust and dirt in a few places. Uh, the fans, oh, there we go. Yeah, the fans do have a little bit of, little bit of tufts of hair here and there. Again, if you've opened up a PC, you've seen much, much worse. So before we continue, we're just gonna remove the large pieces from the battery with the, you know, approved Apple method of swiping it away and out of the case. So what we need to do is just disconnect the battery and it's this connector right here. We'll zoom in so you can actually uh, see it. Oh, I'm heading the wrong direction. There we go. So it's just by the RAM. Grab your favorite spledgen tool and just pop that connector up. You might need to work both sides of it. And it's a good habit to fold this connector back so that way it doesn't accidentally like flump back into place and make a contact while you're working on the inside because that would kind of suck. To get the drive out of here, there is a plastic pull tab which kind of just tells you that yes indeed this computer was designed to be serviced. Uh, but we need to remove these uh, screws here, here, here and here and they're uh, color-coded black. They are captive, I believe, or you don't have to loosen them all the way. No, it doesn't look like they are captive, but you don't need to loosen them all the way. And the drive will come out after you pop those two, but your ribbon cable is underneath and people do break these, so don't just rip it out because you will destroy the cable. Either side, wiggle, 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 pop. Now, your T6, you're going to need to uh, remove the drive bolts on all four sides. They sit in these little orange recesses and keep the drive uh, snug and in place. And again, note the orientation of the drive when it comes out to save yourself the headache. So you have power, data facing that way. You can also check the plug. So just take our Torx driver, shove it in those bolts, and extract. It's also worth mentioning that, of course, a time machine backup of this drive has already been done. So I can just plug the machine back in, do the recovery command on boot, and transfer the client's data uh, back over again without any difficulties. There are um, Lots of driver or drive cloning tools out there. Some of them even come with these SSDs. In my experience, those are better suited to Windows machines, but when it comes to Mac, uh, just use the built-in tool if you have the hardware, of course. So we've got our bolts, put that aside. And we'll zoom out just a little bit. And open up 
our Western Digital Blue SSD. And again, the price was right on this fellow and his read writes are comparable with the other drives that were in the price bracket. So, we're just going to reinstall the bolts and from this point on the installation is reverse order of removal. Okay, so those are in place. Again, orientation of our ribbon cable. Snug it on. And it kind of rocks in like that. So you put the two tabs here, push it down. It's going to bounce a little bit. And that's where we put this guy back on. And thankfully, the uh, Orientation only goes one way, so you can't you can't mess it up. Okay, and you can just tap the drive, make sure it's not rattling, and we're good to go. So, don't forget to reconnect your battery before you assemble this case. If you do reassemble the case and your computer doesn't turn on, that's probably what you did wrong. Okay, so Command R, start. All right, and now that we have our floating globe of awesome, we can now proceed to use the time machine backup and wait laboriously as it clones the entire hard disk. This is, depending on how many files you have, an overnight job. And in this case, it will be. So unfortunately, the footage showing the final boot performance uh, was lost. However, I wanted to report that the average boot time uh, with the new drive was approximately 14 seconds. So that's uh, quite a shave off. Uh, please stay tuned to the next video where we talk about the battery replacement, uh, the brand that was used, and the process to get in there. If you enjoy this content or if you have any questions about uh, laptops or any of the machines that I've worked on or featured on this channel, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.